guys, Andrew here at Dadverb, and this is the latest generation of the Owlet Smart Sock. Now, I reviewed the second gen about four years ago, and since then, Owlet has become one of the most popular monitoring systems among new parents. And it was something that I was planning on revisiting on this channel, but in the recent weeks, Owlet has actually taken the sock off the market. Now, back in October, the FDA issued a warning saying, quote, the warning letter asserts that the company's marketing of its Owlet Smart Sock product in the United States renders the Smart Sock a medical device requiring pre-market clearance or approval from the FDA and that the company has not obtained such clearance or approval in violation of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. The letter went on to request that they stop commercial distribution, which they did. You can't buy uh, the sock off their site anymore. And then Owlet issued a response, which which I have linked in the description, and they are currently in the process of applying to get that FDA approval. Now, whether or not they'll actually get it is something that we're just gonna have to wait and see about, but back in 2017, CBS reported that they were trying to get FDA approval, and that was nearly five years ago, and here we are today. So I'm not entirely sure why the FDA neither approved nor shut down Outlet five years ago, but they had the opportunity to do so. Uh, but the one hint that I can go off of is when The Verge reported on Apple's struggle to get their watch approved by the FDA. And in that article, it says, quote, Blood oxygen monitors or pulse oximeters are considered class two medical devices by the FDA. Generally, any company that wants to sell one in the United States has to submit documentation to the agency confirming that it's a product that works just as well as other versions of the same product already on the market. There's a workaround though. If the company says that the product is just for fun or for general wellness, they don't have to go through that process. They can't claim that it can diagnose or treat any medical condition but they can put it up for sale. So up to this point, that seems to have been what they were doing along with basically every other brand in the category, but something happened, whether the marketing slipped or their IPO ruffled some feathers in 2020, I don't know, but it's been taken off the market and I wanted to help answer some common questions about Outlet's recent news development. So the first question is, is it safe? As of now, the FDA does not believe that this should be used to measure pulse rate or, or blood oxygen saturation. Outlet has made mention of like third party testing and its accuracy and it's really not that hard uh, to find testimonials online of like parents of, of preemies or like NICU nurses who like tout the accuracy of the sock and how it fares comparably, if not better than like uh, hospital grade device but unfortunately, all that is just marketing. It's hearsay. Uh, and in the view of a federal agency that regulates medical products, they haven't approved it and they don't want you using it. Now, there isn't any hard evidence to say that like this is lethal and using this will kill your child, but people against the product generally agree with this doctor's viewpoint. It hasn't really been shown to prevent SIDS. Parents who use it in that way are, are really being falsely reassured and that might lead them to do things that might be unsafe and put them in unsafe sleep environments. The unspoken claim for the sock was that this was monitoring for SIDS and the idea for innovation around a problem like SIDS, come, you know, it comes from a good place. I don't think the company was formed to blatantly price gouge like clueless parents. Like, I think they put a commendable amount of effort and research into innovating a device that could offer some assurances. But that viewpoint you heard earlier, that was something that I was blind to initially. And over time on this channel, you may have heard me change my tune a little bit as I began to like prioritize safe sleep practices over the monitor that I bought. And I, you know, I made the mistake of buying mesh bumpers and overly relying on like breathing monitors monitoring early on um, because that's just what I thought I, I needed and what I wanted and what was best for my baby. But in retrospect, I, I probably should have approached that a little bit differently. I still like the innovation that smart monitors offer and how they can be used uh, as helpful supplementary pieces, but I'm not as rabid about getting them on your registry as I once was, but we'll, we'll circle back to other monitors in just a moment. The next question that I've been hearing a lot is, can you keep using the sock? Now we just highlighted whether or not you should use it. And to reiterate, the FDA says, no, they don't want you using it. But if you're currently an owner of the sock, one of the most common questions that I'm seeing is, are they ending the app support? 
Now, based on a recent statement, you can no longer download the Outlet Care app, but uh, if it's currently installed, you can keep using it for now. Now, I think you can actually still find the sock uh, for sale at places like Bye Bye Baby or Pottery Barn Kids or whatever, uh, but it's basically useless since you can't download the app. So if it is in your registry, I would take it off. It remains to be seen whether or not the sock will fall away completely and they'll sunset the app altogether. We're just we're just gonna have to wait for that. Now, what about the alternatives? Will this impact brands like Nanit's Breathing Bands or Miku's Sensor Fusion Technology, both of which are used to achieve similar results to Outlet Smart Sock? Will those devices fall under the same scrutiny and regulation? These are brands that I still use and I still like, but first you have to keep in mind that the Smart Sock is the product of focus here, not Outlet's monitoring camera. You can still get that. Based on where the FDA draws the line, my assumption is that those other options don't technically fall in the category of a medical device the way the sock does since it's an actual pulse oximeter reading vital. Well, let me just take it off. Like, so you see like a purple flashing light right there. If I put my finger on it, it turns red. Like it's actually like doing like a, a reading my pulse and reading my vitals. The other devices, they don't do that. Also, Nana and Miku have completely different aspects to the monitor, like sleep tracking, analytics, measurements, what and whatnot. Like they've got like a bunch of bells and whistles, right? So if they did come under fire, they'd probably just stop you know, the, the breathing monitoring aspect of, of things and, and keep going on with the other parts of their business. In fact, Outlet is actually moving forward with their dream sock, which I believe is supposed to be like reporting on sleep data and trends. So we're just gonna have to see how that develops. Uh, and I believe they're due to release that in January of 2022. But again, these are just things that you don't need necessarily, um, but they can offer some helpful insights. But regardless of the brand, the marketing is what always gets dicey. I spoke with Rachel Peachman. She's the Consumer Reports journalist who's uh, reporting on the Fisher Price Rock and Play and the Boppy Newborn Lounger, uh, actually aided in their product recalls. She's a brilliant journalist. And I was really excited to, to be able to talk to her. And, and I was curious, why is the Boppy Newborn Lounger gone when Docatot still lives on? And, and why is the Rock and Play gone when numerous identical other rockers and swings remain on the market? And there's a lot to it, but I'd say that the main component, what it kind of boils down to here is those products didn't do a good enough job at delineating that they should not have been used for sleep uh, and only supervised wait time. And unfortunately, those products were tied to multiple infant deaths. It kind of boils down to the marketing. And if you read the letter that the FDA issued to Outlet, it referred to the marketing. Now, a good example of how a brand's marketing department will work with legal to avoid any sort of blowback is, is Docatot. Uh, they they rebranded to refer to their products as docking stations during supervised lounging rather than co-sleepers, which is kind of how they were founded. And, and that's the marketing switch, that very subtle marketing switch that's kept them going. Now, same thing with Snuggle Me Organic. These are essentially the same products as the Boppy Newborn Lounger, just marketed a little bit differently. And everyone generally knows full well that parents will still use them for sleep, but it doesn't matter because they're not marketed that way anymore. Now, a bunch of parenting groups on Facebook that I follow, you know, will say that that's inherently unethical and moral, which I get. I'm not saying that it's evil though, because unfortunately, that's just how business works. And as a company, you have to adapt with change and figure out a way to just keep going. And brands have done so within the juvenile product industry and outside of it. It's just, a, it's a very common thing. So back to the question though, will it affect Nanit, Miku, and whatever Cubo AI has cooking? Cause I'm pretty sure they're gonna release something along those lines in like Q1 of 2022, I think. Uh, but regardless, like based on how they're positioning their monitors though, I don't think these brands are really gonna feel anything. So the point of all this is if you believe in these products and you have a personality where it doesn't contribute to like increased anxiety like it does for some, I think smart monitors can offer value only if it's being used as a supplementary piece to safe sleep practices, um, but that's just my opinion on it. I'd love for this story to be less of a battle where you have the FDA saying like, hey, we're the government and you don't have permission to sell this device, you cut corners, shut it down, like whatever. I'd, I'd love for the narrative to be much more along the lines of like, you know, 
hey, you've developed a very promising product here. Let's see how we can work together to make something truly uh, impactful that can save infants lives and give parents peace of mind. Let's do this together. Let's figure out a way to make it work. Obviously, like I love for that to happen. Uh, whether or not you agree or disagree with that narrative, that's on you. That, it doesn't, you know, you don't have to agree with me here. But um, I, I personally love to see tech innovation really help people's lives. And, and when it comes to expecting parents and, and, and newborns, you know, it's still in its infancy. Um, and I'd love to see it not be halted and, and continue safely. So we'll see how it goes. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button down there. Looks like a thumbs up. For more videos and reviews for new parents, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching this video and come back for the next one. God bless. Later.